Welcome to Fox TV News, where everything is true. Defective, overweight vehicles and inexperienced drivers blame for spur tree crashes. Two road safety experts said inexperienced drivers, overweight and defective vehicles are among the main causes for fatalities on the crash point Spur Tree Hill Main Road in Manchester. The crucial road links Mandeville in its environment to St. Elizabeth and Point West. Heavily laden, slow-moving trucks often hinder traffic on the steep, difficult hills and there have been a number of fatal crashes involving trucks down the years. Dr. Jones, Vice Chairman of the National Road Safety Council and a senior police officer who asked not to be named, said drivers need training in how to maneuver on this steep hill. As recently as last week, an out-of-control trailer loaded with sand collided with a motor car, resulting in both vehicles plunging over precipice and three people being injured. The new Road Traffic Act is going to broaden the scope of training that takes place when they, the drivers, go to the depot to get their license and the kind of investigation which is done on vehicles when you go for fitness, Dr. Jones stated. Training is a central part of it in terms of getting your general license or your trailer license, he added. Regulations for the new Road Traffic Act finally made their way to Parliament on Tuesday after three years since the passage of the bill, which had been seen by government and opposition at loggerheads up to November. Dr. Jones pointed to the five-step safe system approach, which he said has been adopted by the National Road Safety Council. The context within which we are talking about per tree and the number of crashes which have taken place on the road over the years is the last year 484 people died on the national roads. It means, therefore, that the recommendations by the World Health Organization that we should adopt the safe system approach to promote road safety in country and which the Prime Minister, who is the Chairman of the Road Safety Council, has formally adopted safe roads, safe speed, safe road users, safe vehicles, and an efficient post-crash system, he stated. He said based on crash reports from the police, some drivers involved in the crashes on the Spur Tree Hill main road do not engage in low gear early enough to slow the vehicle. They depend rather on brakes, which can fail you, especially with very heavy vehicles, and turning around those curves often leads to the kind of new support that we get about crashes, both non-fatal and fatal, he said. The number one, warning to drivers to be extremely careful when they are going down that road and also for those who are coming up off the road because you never can tell what may happen around those curves, he added. The senior police officer said overladen trucks are mainly to be blamed. As you start descending the hill, the first sign says engage low gear, but it doesn't matter the gear you engage in if you are overloaded. The vehicle still a run faster than the normal, he said. He said coming up in Winston Jones Highway from east heading west puts a lot of pressure on the vehicle. It a run hotter than normal because the hill is long. All the way up until you reach Hatsfield, when it is time to descend, the hill that the road is really hot. Whether you engage high gear or low gear, you are usually going to use the brake the same. It is not holding as when it was cold, he explained. If your vehicle is running too fast, you can't manage gear in the middle of the hill. It is a combination of things that cause accidents, he said. Experienced truck drivers have long had the habit of chilling out by parking outside Mandeville after completing the steep Winston Jones Highway before descending Spur Tree Hill. Driving a truck around Kingston to deliver goods is different from going downhill. Different ball game, said the police source. He added that inexperience and greed are also factors that lead to accidents involving heavy units. Plenty of truck drivers want to make three trips in one day and it is not possible them are forced to think, he said. Successive administrations have pledged to build a bypass road for Spur Tree Hill. It's unclear how those plans will evolve given expenditure realignments caused by the coronavirus pandemic. Dr. Jones stated the answer to that kind of challenging road surface is to really build maybe another bypass road to that era where the road is much straighter. It may have some amount of downhill, but as with the Edward Sierra Highway, the inclines are not so steep and they are much safer to negotiate than the Spur Tree Hill.
Police moving to address gridlock on Ultraras Main Road. Head of the St. Anne Police Division, Senior Superintendent Dwight Powell and his team have introduced several measures to reduce gridlock on major roads in the parish in recent times. Motorists are currently facing lengthy delays when traveling along the main road to and from Ultraras during peak hours. What we are trying to do to mitigate the problem is to have police officers on point duties at various intersections such as Knoxford intersection in priority and also along at the 8 Rivers Plaza in Ocherias so as to keep the traffic flowing, Powell noted. The congestion is believed to be a result of commercial and residential development along the highway with several entry and exit points. Motorists traveling in the easterly direction towards St. Mary upon approaching the traffic signal at Knoxford Express intersection in Drugs Hall usually experience delays. The same is true along the party main road, which has many established businesses. Powell indicated that another strategy that they have been relying on heavily to remedy the problem is regulating the traffic light. We have collaborated with the National Works Agency to give the traffic light at some intersection longer runs than other sections. That way, the traffic can flow a bit faster, said Powell, who also urged that indiscipline among motorists is contributing significantly to the traffic woes. Some motorists are undertaking and overtaking in areas where that is not permitted. We want to ask the motorists to obey the rules of the road, especially the taxi operators, said Powell. A recommendation is that we put some boulders on the soft shoulders to prevent undertaking, Powell added. He said there is also a recommendation for a bypass to be constructed for motorists traveling through party. That, he said, is urgently needed because there are more expected developments which will increase traffic flow. Vax Pars Delight Local sporting officials Wednesday night welcome an early revelation by Health and Wellness Minister Dr. Christopher Tufton that the Cabinet has been given favorable consideration to a recommendation to all the public to attend some upcoming calendar events on proof of vaccination. Tufton told journalists that the development following the handing over of a long-awaited 35.4 million field hospital in Savannah Lamar Public General Hospital. Persons who are vaccinated are the ones who will have access and know that we have the electronic form of vaccination verification we can easily verify or validate using the QR code and the reading of the QR code to determine the vaccination status, Dr. Tufton stated. Some people may not like it because they may think that they are as entitled as those who are vaccinated. But the truth is, as I have said, there comes a time when probably given the opportunity, having shown the signs and having explained some of the concerns, we cannot really, I think, in fairness, to continue to restrict those who have more than the effort to take the precaution to protect themselves at the expense of those who have not, added the minister. Contacted by reporters for a reaction, Dalton Wind, General Secretary for the Jamaica Football Federation, JFF, which has long been appealing for fans to be allowed to attend World Cup qualifiers, said, That would be great, but we understand and will work with whatever is presented. But it would really be a good boost because to have the sport opening up and to be able to engage with vaccinated supporters would be a good thing for the JFF at this time. There would be an opportunity for spectators to cheer the team along and coupled with that, it would open the doors for more sponsorship because you would have a lot more eyes. Another thing is that they would have people coming through the turnstiles which would contribute to the JFF coffers. Arlene Martin, General Manager for Professional Football Jamaica Limited, PFJL, which runs the Jamaica Premier League, was equally pleased. If the government of Jamaica were to allow vaccinated persons to attend sporting events, the PFJL, clubs and all players of the Jamaica Premier League would be obviously delighted, Martin stated. This would mean even greater access to persons to not only view the games but to return to the experience of football. The PFJL would, of course, be ready and willing for full compliance to the protocols established as we aim to bring the new product to our fans, she added. Tricia Robinson, Netball Jamaica president, said that safety of all players, spectators and media personnel at any and all sporting event is of utmost importance. 
we will support all relevant regulations enacted to protect everyone and look forward to the holding of sporting event in a safe environment with all protocols being observed. Earlier in Savannah Lamar, Dr. Tufton argued that there is a logistics in the cabinet position taken on Monday this week to regard the vaccinated. There is validity in taking a policy position to say that those who are not vaccinated really should not enjoy at this time, two years after COVID, and all the responses that we would have had the proof that vaccines are good and effective denying those who are vaccinated the opportunity to begin to move faster to some sense of normalcy, he said. The minister further disclosed that in two weeks, the government's decision on which calendar activities will be allowed patrons will be made known to the public. A team comprising Tufton, Minister of Culture, Gender, Entertainment and Sport Olivia Bobsey Grange and local government minister Desmond McKenzie will determine which calendar events will be allowed to accommodate vaccinated patrons. Tufton said the events will be determined by their national significance and their capacity to control access points. So, venue issues will be a big issue and capacity to apply the validation exercise that we require in terms of vaccination, he explained. Work had commenced on the 36 Bedfield Hospital in November last year and was paused for the function on Wednesday. However, work is to resume today. Lyon Scott, CEO of Jamaica Medical Cannabis Company Group and Norman Home of Arc Manufacturing and Arc Properties Limited are the donors. The tent-type facility has a concrete foundation that is capable of accommodating concrete walls when the tent is removed. Dr. Tufton noted that as long as he remains the minister, he is committed to building out a ward on the base of the complemented but over 190-bed capacity Savannah Lamar General Public Hospital. Meanwhile, four Toyota Costa bus convert to mobile vaccination centers were unveiled on Wednesday. They join another five similar buses operated by the Health Ministry. The cost of the buses was not disclosed when asked by reporters. However, Dr. Tufton said this signified another phase in the vaccination program by the government, which is to take the vaccine into communities and districts working with the health aid and the primary health nurse care in the field. What we really want to get to in this phase of COVID is to ensure that no Jamaican is denied an opportunity to be vaccinated if they so desire, and indeed, for those Jamaicans who are not enthusiastic about vaccines, to be given the opportunity to be convinced through dialogue and the mobile buses. So, we are making it very easy, and it is now for Jamaicans to take advantage, said the health minister. The buses are equipped with a refrigerator for the vaccines, an electricity generator, and other necessary items. In other words, it is really a drive-in clinic, and incidentally, post-COVID, these will be used for other very important outreach. So, what are the benefits of COVID? We have built out infrastructure, which previous to COVID-19 never existed, but will continue to exist for additional hospital care in the absence of COVID, stated Dr. Tufton. Please remember to subscribe, like, share, and click the notification bell for daily updates.